the Wildlife Rescue Center, head vet Amanda takes the lead wrangling a crocodile. One, two, three, go. It's all in a day's work for Malawi's only wildlife rescue team. To catch Sheila safely, the first task is to immobilize her jaws. So crocodiles have a lot of strength in their bite. So when they close their mouths, there's a lot of power behind that. But to open them, they have quite a weak opening strength. So really what we need to do is get a rope or get some tape even around that mouth and keep it shut. Um, and that takes away one of her weapons and gives us a little bit more of an advantage in the crocodile restraint game. It's going to take a team effort to restrain her from behind the fence. Is everybody kind of ready? Yep. Is there such a sinkhole ready? Nope. Amanda's going to need a steady hand to get the rope loop around Sheila's mouth. The knot needs to go down. So I'm holding the knot and Charlotte's pulling. Wait, Charlotte's pulling. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Stop, stop, okay, stop, stop. Now continue without pulling yours anymore through. Continue. Now the noose is secure, Amanda and Laston can risk going inside the enclosure. Sheila is drowsy, but by no means asleep. She's slow. She's not completely out of it, but she's slow. Everyone is on high alert. I'm going to throw this to you, Cat, OK? Yep. No. Oh, sorry, baby. Okay. Pull tight. Pull. Not, no, not like that. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> the next part of the plan needs precision timing. Okay. Are you guys ready? Be very careful of the tail. If it quacks you, it'll hurt for sure, okay? When we do it, we just throw ourselves on and try to manually restrain. Are we okay? They're going to jump on the crocodile. And we'll say one. It's okay. We're all on top of each other, right? Okay. We'll go one, two, three, go. Ready? One, two, three, go. All right. Last one, let go. Okay, perfect. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Sheila is restrained, but they want to be absolutely sure she can't bite them. Okay, one more and we'll be good. We need to have a towel and we'll wrap it around her eyes. Yeah. Alza, can you run a towel in? Hey, baby. Okay, okay. Okay, so are you sitting on her? Okay, this is violating. <laughs> have you got her? Yep. Okay. Watch that eye, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> We're just tying up her hands and her feet. Unfortunately, her feet are quite small, um, so it's proving difficult to rope them because it's just slipping off. Charlotte, do you know what her respiratory rate is? Uh, yeah, one breath a minute. One? Yeah. Her breathing rate is very, very low. Um, that is fairly normal for these guys, but it just means it's a little bit hard to monitor. So I'm just keeping a hand on so I can count her breaths and make sure that the drugs aren't causing it to become too low. So we're just finishing tying up her feet. Once this is done, she'll be as restrained as we can get her. And then we'll need to transfer her onto the car. All right, so now we need to get her up and onto this stretcher, guys. An old paddling pool serves as a makeshift stretcher. One, two, three. Pull, pull, pull. Let's go. Can, can someone else help co? Help right. lift, ready? One, One two, two, three. Great, good, good. Amazing. All right, so now we've got her on a stretcher. We can get her up and out of here. That's it? Great, OK. All right, ready? One, two, three. Right. At last, Sheila is loaded onto the truck. But Charlotte has noticed her breathing rate has slowed down even further. This could be dangerous. They need to give her the first of the reversal drugs now. She didn't like that injection very much. Shoot that, Charlotte. Hey, she's not as sleepy. She just doesn't want to breathe. Yeah. So um, she's breathing now. Well, so am I. You have accomplished your goal. 
Now they have another conundrum. So the question is, is it better to take her off of this plastic for thermoregulation? It's your call. I don't know. We've never transported anything on an inflatable pool before. <laughs> what? No, no, we can't. Um, I look at it as it's going to make it really humid in this It's going to make it sticky. Yeah, maybe we try and get it out. Yeah. Yeah, but really slowly. So if you guys, last, if you jump down to ground level, and you and Co just grab and just keep pulling, and I'll help lift the weight where I can. See, Liv, this is where you're earning your keep here. <laughs> This is a test of my strength. Oh. <laughs> All right. We, we can bring her up a little bit yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. Make sure the nose and yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, the rope. Yeah, go, go. Yeah, you're fine. Good. That'll do. Yeah, so what we're doing now is just covering her with water. Um, she's not going to be able to control her own body temperature very well while she's in transit. So by covering her with water, we help cool her down. Her breathing rate is starting to come up a little bit. Um, that's what we would expect at this point, having reversed the drugs that she has on board. Um, so it's a good sign that she seems to be starting to recover quite nicely. Sheila is finally on her way to freedom. <laughs> Sheila, the two and a half metre Nile crocodile, is nearing the end of her journey to the release site. After 10 years at the Wildlife Center, she's going to have a new home in Tuma Forest Reserve. Tuma's landscape is steep and rocky, so there's still a lot of work ahead to get Sheila to the dam where she's going to be set free. We can't drive Sheila to the dam. We have to actually carry her a kilometer from the road to the dam. So that requires a big team because it's not just eight guys who are, are holding this. They need to rotate out because she's at least 150 kg of solid crocodile. As soon as they arrive, Amanda checks on Sheila. Okay, so okay. we're going just to one second. Not too many people. Okay. A crocodile's heart rate is always slow, but Amanda's not convinced she's breathing at all. Okay. Oh, this. Okay. Oh, okay. She's not dead. Amanda gives her another reversal drug. Ideally, we could have put her into a box with minimal sedation anesthesia and carried the whole box, but that box is heavy. The crocodile is heavy and it's really going to be <laughs> too much. Lynn Clifford is the park manager at Tuma. She thinks this reserve is the perfect home for Sheila. We believe that every wildlife should have a chance to live wild and free, and it's something that we're very passionate about. It's really important, and it's doing good for the population of wildlife in Malawi as well. We still have a kilometer between the road and the body of water, and we need to get Sheila down into the body of water by carrying her. And so this is one of the reasons that we want her to still be a little bit sedated so that she's not struggling too much when we're trying to manually carry her. Let's go. Lynn's team of scouts are going to have to carry Sheila in relay as she's so heavy. Okay, so heading up to one of the longest rivers in Tuma, there's uh, three little dams, so there's no conflict with people, there's no chance of people here, so she's very safe. Um, and there should be a good bit of food, so I think she'll do quite well here. Although Sheila will be on her own in the dam, further upstream there are other crocodiles. Uh, Halfway through the journey, the stretcher's buckling under Sheila's weight. They have to reinforce it with a second one. The release site has been chosen to give Sheila the best chance of success. For her first foray into being wild, then it's best for her to kind of like figure out wild by herself alone and get to choose when she gets to meet other crocodiles. So being, being put in a dam where she's the only crocodile right now is the best thing. They've arrived. Okay. And then if we can lift her and pull this out. You think? Yeah. They don't know how Sheila will react when they unstrap her, 
but they can't take any chances. What we want is I need four, five, four people. Amanda's going to employ the same technique as the team did to catch her, but in reverse. Back legs are almost off. Okay. Okay, done. And both they off. were barely secured. Oh, good. Sorry, Anna. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Olivia is careful to make sure that Sheila's jaws are the last thing she unties. And the croc is given the final part of the reversal drugs to make sure she wakes up fully. Ooh, she's breathing. You can see her nose holes open now. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. We're going to count to three, and then I'll say go. Yeah. Okay. We'll all go together, okay? One, two, three... Go. Okay, cool. <laughs> and we look extremely stupid, but just in case. <laughs> Sheila is coming out of her slumber and appears to be rather attached to the rope. I'm sorry, lady. Okay, cool. Yeah. Don't go any closer than me, though. Yeah, no. Are you happy with her? This isn't as easy to get in. Yeah. Thought it might be from another angle. She finally relents. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and her head's up. Look at that. She's holding her heads up and she's saying, leave. Bye, everyone, because you guys are all trash. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't know yet. She's just, like, unhappy about having been manhandled all day. Mm -hmm. What she doesn't know yet is that she's free. Sheila's gone back to doing what she does best, lying in wait. Well done, guys. That was y'all. That was amazing. Sheila has been released. She's here. She's alert. She is just wearing off the last bits of her anesthesia. It's been kind of a long day for her. And so she's not going to be bothered tonight. This is away from people. Um, and it is next to a body of water. And she's unlikely to go into it until she's ready. So she, she's ready to spend her first night in her new home. She hasn't seen the outdoor wilderness in a long time, so she's back in her natural habitat. We're hoping that Sheila will spend the rest of her life uh, free and safe. <laughs> oh, what a day. And it ends with you and Tuma. That is fantastic. See you later. Sheila is now free to live her own life the way she chooses, along with all the other former residents of Lilongwe Wildlife Centre that have been given a second chance at freedom. Over the last few months, Malawi's only wildlife rescue team has returned almost 80 animals to the wild, where they belong. But their work continues. Bye, buddy. I love working with animals in the wild, and I like working to get animals back into the wild. OK. <laughs> but once they're out there, I think about them every once in a while, where you're like, I really hope this animal's doing OK. But you don't worry about them anymore, because they're where they're supposed to be. It's open. For me personally, releases can be a little bit of a kind of mixed emotions event. Obviously, we're so excited to see them back out there in the wild, but a part of you does miss them. You know, you put a lot of time and effort into these animals. You get to know their personalities, and, and it is a little bit sad when they're not here anymore, but release is the ultimate goal, and that's the very best place for them. Whenever we release animals, it makes me incredibly proud of the team that I work in. Nothing, nothing in the world beats that feeling. Now, here he goes. Yeah. Hey, Love Nature fans. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.